morning to all the students and teachers and Mr. Xila from St. Nicholas. Um, my name is Mr. Alan Liebau. Um, I'm a teacher here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, I've been really excited about having this teleconference with the students from schools here in America to the students over there in the Philippines. So I've been moving from school to school, so I see different students every day. So I have somewhat good amount of knowledge about the schools here, and um, I'd like to answer the question. I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes I, I mess up just as much as people mess up my name, so if um, I apologize in advance. You guys get a, a good idea of how it's like in the schools over here in America and what similarities and differences you guys may see in your own school in, uh, compared to ours. Here are the first ones. Uh, Sabrina Santos. Hi, Sabrina. Well, the education in our country as a whole, uh, it's, it's always going to be a process. Uh, just like children are always growing and learning new things, uh, our schools are always trying to get better, to make improvements. So there's some areas where the schools uh, may provide a better education for some students than, than other schools. It all depends on where you live here in America. Uh, but America definitely provides some of the best education in the world. Michaela is it Michaela Elise? Hi, good day, sir. What do you use? Do you use books or tablets? Michaela, so in the classrooms I've taught in, we usually use books uh, for math. Definitely, there's books, science, uh, social studies, or history. We use books. Uh, those are the primary sources for learning. Uh, but there are definitely times when you use uh, technology, uh, whether it's computers or tablets or laptops, uh, students are able to utilize those for to advance their learning. They usually use the internet and there's some educational games um, and other resources they use online to help with their study. A question from Kelly Ubrera. So I think we've been using technology here since, uh, it's been a long time. Um, the programs now available for students include a bunch of educational games where students are playing, but they don't even know that they're actually practicing a certain skill or learning a new subject. So those have been very valuable for our schools today. Questions from Rain Have Maniquez. Uh, so most of the main learning materials, such as the books and the computers, laptops, paper, uh, that's usually provided by the school um, and the district. But the teacher has to provide everything else, all the little things, such as uh, writing materials, posters. Um, any kind of visuals that we need to put up in the classroom, uh, we usually have to provide it. Um, in the beginning of the school year, we'll set up a list of school supplies that students need to bring or have at some point, usually within the first few weeks of school, um, whether it's their folders, uh, writing materials, uh, all these, uh, all the little school supplies that are essential for, uh, they, that they need to use on a daily basis. Uh, Francis Vire. Well, school starts at 8.40 a.m. and we finish at 3.16. So that's about uh, six and a half hours um, to being at school. Students get a 30 minute lunch and then they're in recess for about 20 minutes. So t technically they're in the classroom for, uh, I wanna say about five hours, a little bit over five hours of actually um, doing school. Question from Allison C.N. Abad. Uh, so every school has a variety of after-school programs outside of the classroom. Um, we have educational programs such as tutoring. We also have something called STEAM, 
which stands for Science, Technology, uh, Engineering, Arts, and Math, which is an after-school program where students are able to dive e into deeper deeper areas of those subjects and learn um, new things that they're, we're not able to teach them inside the classroom and they're able to do different projects and interact with other students. Making these cool different projects from Janila Botor. Uh, I'm not really sure what sections are. We don't have uh, sections. Um, I don't know if that's levels. Um, my parents told me about sections in the Philippines, but I, I don't remember. I'm gonna have to get back to you on that question. I'm sorry. From Chris, Chris Aguirre. What are your latest brands of gadgets? Uh, so I think the most popular brand of gadgets in technology, if we had to choose, we'd probably use Apple. Um, a lot of the more funded schools, in the Mayaman schools, uh, they usually use Apple. But I also see Microsoft, uh, Acer, Asus, uh, and HP. Yeah. Question from Arian Cruz. Um, Arian, unfortunately, there are always going to be bullies in every school. Um, it's been a problem in American schools that's constantly getting worse. And I think it's because of all the technology and social media where kids are able to communicate with each other without their parents even knowing. It's not just at school where kids are getting picked on or being left out and feeling bullied. There'll be students who get bullied on social media, you know, on Facebook. They'll, they'll call people names, they'll make fun of people through Facebook. Um, yeah, there's just a... It's, it's, it's very difficult. It's hard to... It's hard to catch every single time a student is getting bullied, you know. We, we only have two eyes, there's only one teacher per classroom, so there's times where it, it's difficult. It's something that we address to all our students and warn them about all the problems we have about bullying and what it could lead to. So um, it's something we, we're definitely trying to, to improve and uh, avoid here in America. Um, that was a good question, thank you. Uh, next one is from Juan Abejero. My personal favorite subject, because I've always been good at it and I love, love teaching it and uh, figuring out new ways to help students understand it better, but I, I love teaching math. Math has always been my strongest suit and it's the subject I probably can teach uh, the best also. Uh, next question is from Denise Enriquez. Uh, Denise asks, how many teachers do you have per grade level? Uh, Denise, so in elementary school from kindergarten up to fifth or sixth grade, because uh, some elementary schools go up to fifth grade, some elementary schools go up to sixth grade, um, but usually you have one teacher per grade. So if you're in a third grade class, you're only going to have one teacher who teaches all the subjects. Um, sometimes they'll have, a school will have like a PE teacher or an art teacher, but for the main subjects such as science and math and um, write, reading and writing, that's gonna be one teacher. But once you get to middle school, once you get to that grade, seventh grade and higher, then you're gonna have multiple teachers, about some, usually it's about six, sometimes seven or eight teachers, but um, in an elementary school, you're gonna have only one teacher. Nathan Shearer. What is the actual location of your school? Asks, what is the actual location of your school? Uh, so I used to teach in Chino Hills, California, which is about 30 minutes away from Los Angeles. And I was teaching there for the last about five years before I just moved here to Las Vegas, Nevada. It's right next to California. A uh, question from Michaela Alarcon. Hi sir, what are the subjects do you have here? 
Uh, so in an elementary school setting, we have, uh, again, math, science, uh, social studies, which is like history, U.S. history, world history, um, English, of course, which is uh, reading and writing. And then um, about once, once or twice a week, we'll have P.E., we'll have art, and we'll have music. Question from Fritz Benitez. Uh, so most of the tests or assessments are already prepared by the books and the materials that we use to teach. Um, but there's sometimes where teachers will will uh, will work together to create uh, a test or quiz that will accommodate certain students, and uh, we'll do that every once in a while. But usually the tests are prepared by the standards and the state books that we have to use. Uh, question from James Botor. Good day, sir. What time do you go to school? What time do you go to school? Um, I think I answered this already, but uh, again, it, we start at 8.40 a.m. Um, and we end at 3.16. Uh, there's some schools who start even earlier than that. I think they start around 7.10 a.m. And they'll end at 2, I believe. 2 a.m. Or 2 p.m., I'm sorry. A uh, question from Andy Barairo. <laughs> when a student is late, they usually just get a warning. Um, but once they are consistently late, we see that they're going to be late several times a week or even once a week. That's when we'll start to uh, we'll start to contact their parents and explain to them that their son or daughter needs to get to school on time because they're missing an essential part of the lesson, and they're going to fall behind if they're constantly missing out on certain parts of a subject. A uh, question from Rosenda May Leal. Uh, she asked, what is your least favorite subject? Um, I, my least favorite subject growing up and I think to teach, and I, I don't want to say it's the subject that I hate, but it's just the subject that I was never very good at, which is uh, science. So it's hard for me to teach it correctly. I'm always having to teach myself first before I'm teaching a lesson in science because I, I always forget all the little details of there's so much to know about science and I'm always just learning on a daily basis. Marvane Trinidad. How do you go to school? Walking, service, or play car? Uh, most students and teachers here, uh, we're usually going to use a car because it's kind of far to get the streets are far from each other and there's not a lot of public transportation like buses. We usually use a car. Uh, students get dropped off by their parents or sometimes they'll do a thing where they carpool where a, a parent would take several students. Uh, they'll pick up like other classmates or other friends and so they only have to take one car. Or the school bus is also available but not a lot of students use it. They'll probably have one or two school buses per school that carries 30 to 60 students a day. Otherwise, the main source of transportation is using your own car. And uh, last question, I think, from John Patrick. How often do you get homework and projects? Uh, so a lot of teachers, most teachers, they'll give homework on a daily basis. Um, elementary, they usually don't give students homework for the weekends. Usually it's Monday through Friday. Um, I've seen a lot of teachers, especially for the younger grades, who gives out homework weekly. So they'll give out a packet on the first day of school on Monday, and a student has to complete it by the end of the week on Friday. Um, as far as projects, uh, it depends on the lessons. Sometimes we'll have one project that takes a whole month to do. Um, other times we'll have several projects a month. It all really depends on the lesson and what we're learning at that point. Thank you guys for these questions. I, I hope I was clear in um, answering these questions and giving you guys a really good idea of 
how it's like in the schools over here but hopefully by the end of this school year um, we'll be able to set something up so um uh this was this has been really fun if you guys have any more questions for me if you guys uh ever want to speak again um we'll we'll set it up with uh, mr kasilag um but it's uh good to hear from you guys and i hope you guys are well over there in the philippines um, i really like to visit at some point and yes thank you have